Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Zangati VDI Performance Management Webinar. We're very happy to have you with us this morning, and we've got an exceptional uh, guest today, an analyst, Zayus Taravala, who has done some outstanding work in the field, and we're really pleased to present him alongside Zangati today and to discuss with you the critical elements for VDI Performance Management. By way of a brief introduction, the Ngadi as a company is focused on identifying and anticipating different types of contention that occur inside of shared environments, whether those are for VDI desktops or whether they're for server virtualization. We understand how these things crop up from the usage patterns and normal behavior, and we also do a great job at specifying how they can be resolved through a family of dashboards that are specialized towards either desktops or towards server infrastructure. And at this point, we've got a wide range of customers that range from the global multinationals through government, retail, banking, healthcare, a wide variety of different uh, vertical markets, sizes of customers. And we're very pleased to, to share what we're doing with you today. But without any further ado, what we'd like to do is turn this order to turn this over to Zenzeos uh, to give us a perspective kind of across the industry about BDI performance monitoring and why it's so critical. Thanks, Nathaniel. I certainly appreciate the introduction. Uh, um, and it's a great talk to talk about. I think um, certainly desktop virtualization has become a, or VDI has become a very hot topic of late. I think there's been a number of drivers uh, that have caused that. And I think the whole era of virtual computing has move this closer and closer to organizations wanting to make this uh, broader reality in their organizations. I think the concept of VDI or virtual computing has been around, um, gosh, 20 years now, all the way back to the thin client days, and, you know, the industry has gone through some stops and starts. But what, what I've seen is a larger trend to try and virtualize more resources. And, you know, throughout um, the decades, uh, computing has gone through several several other waves of change, and each of those changes or each of those waves of change was driven by kind of larger uh, mega forces at work that create almost like a perfect storm effect. So, for instance, the last major change, which was the internet computing generation, um, it wasn't really any one thing that kicked off the internet era. We, uh, but it was a combination of cheap PCs and home broadband and. Um, you know, Windows-based uh, devices in the browser, and all those came together and really kicked off that revolution. With, with VDI, while we've had the technology to do it for a while, some of the other things, there's other forces that surround, that need to surround us to really drive utilization weren't really there. But today, in this era of cloud computing, mobility, BYOD, uh, high adoption rates of server virtualization, um, we're finally starting to see those forces come together and create almost like a mini perfect storm effect that I think is going to really drive us more towards virtual computing. And um, there's some big advantages to companies. So as we shift this new computing model, we're going to see the, the cost of computing dramatically lowered, and that's been one of the big value props of VDI. We'll see the, the value of the network raised as well, and because VDI is ostensibly a uh, network-centric compute model, which is one of the reasons why I think uh, management of it has to change. But I'll get into that a little bit later. Now, if you look at the next slide, um, uh, VDI, I think, completes the virtual computing puzzle. I think what we've seen over um, uh, the last few years is, is uh, different parts of the ecosystem um, uh, have started to become virtualized and uh, allows us to really deliver this virtual workspace uh, for, for users or for workers. Um, um, uh, server virtualization, of course, is one piece of that. And server virtualization now is, is no longer kind of an unusual thing. It used to be a decade or so ago, companies would have a handful of servers virtualized. But today, the majority of workloads, is, uh, workloads are virtualized. In fact, from some survey data um, I, that I did last year, 2013 was, was a crossover point in the way for server virtualization, where there's many more virtualized workloads than there are um, uh, than, than there are physical ones. Now, in addition to that, we've moved more and more um, uh, applications to the cloud, right? So uh, that's a better, that creates a different kind of client access model. Uh, some of our collaborative technologies have now moved to virtual models as well. So 
these devices now have better video capabilities. They have better uh, voice capabilities. They're easier to print. And so VDI becomes, in many ways, that missing piece of the puzzle that completes this virtual computing puzzle. So if, if, if workers now want to move to a kind of complete virtual workspace model, they can do that without having to put the company at a lot of risk. Now, my next slide, um, um, I want to just talk a little bit about what VDI is. Um, and so from a definitional perspective, you can think of VDI as being um, um, part of the overall uh, kind of broader um, virtual computing um, uh, kind of market. Uh, it's been, like I said, it's, uh, it, it's been around a little while, but um, it, it allows for the desktop to actually run as a virtual image on a data center server. Um, and then those images run on, um, uh, of course, run on the endpoint and then are in some ways resource uh, independent of what's running on there. Um, it's based on a shared resource model. I think it's a great enabler for bringing your own device. So almost every organization I talk to today has some kind of BYOD plans in place. One of the challenges of BYOD, of course, is that um, it was traditional computing, client-server computing, or client computing, uh, organizations were able to standardize on operating systems, and even in some cases, on particular devices, and that made it very easy to manage the environment. Today with BYOD, in some ways, it's the complete antithesis of this, where there is no standards for the type of device you use, there's no standard for the type of operating system you use, and so trying to build a gold image or whatever for um, to roll out on these devices is very difficult. If you can run these things in software as images on a centralized server and just display them on these endpoints, that of course makes um, uh, that of course makes it much more scalable. Um, so in my mind, VDI is the next wave of computing. It offers much better security than traditional computing, uh, much more flexibility, and at a lower cost. And if you think about how important that is, that that's really a secure, agile environment. And there's not a business leader today that if you ask them what, are you, what, some, you know, what their top initiatives are, they won't tell you that, that business agility is among one of the most important initiatives in the company. And as I've said many times in many other conferences and things, um, you can't truly have business agility until you have IT agility, and there's no way to make your endpoint end computing strategy agile without VDI. So I think VDI in many ways is, a, is an enabler of, uh, of, 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 a business, of IT agility, which in turn is an enabler of business agility. Now, um, if you look at the next slide, the, uh, VDI enables a much broader uh, worker toolkit, and this part of this is, um, uh, you, you know, goes along with, uh, um, with uh, the whole BYOD trend. So the worker toolkit historically was what you saw on the left-hand side. Corporate-issued laptop, corporate-issued lab applications, corporate issued mobile device, and then a VPN client that allows you to, to access it. Today, the, the, the worker toolkit is made up of a multitude of devices. You can have a traditional laptop, you know, there's MacBooks, Chromebooks, uh, tablets. Uh, there's new tablets coming up all the time, uh, different mobile devices. There's, um, and one of the risks of the organization is there's a bunch of consumer apps that fall in that as well. And if you don't enable workers a way to be able to use these devices at work, they will find a way through the use of USB sticks, consumer applications, and you really don't want that. You want to have a much more controlled environment. So VDI does enable a broader worker toolkit. Now, the, one of the other ways to solve this problem is you could just say, well, as an organization, we're going to simply standardize on these mobile devices and these mobile operating systems. But that's very difficult to do because leadership changes hands in mobility very, very quickly. If you think back you know, five to seven years ago, the leader in mobile devices was a company called Trio, right? And then it was BlackBerry a little bit after that. And, and, uh, and then, of course, it became Windows and Android. And so think of how many changes we've had in mobile operating systems over the past, uh, you know, five to seven years. And so from an organizational perspective, um, you, you really can't bank on a certain OS. So your compute strategy needs to be um, uh, OS independent, and VDI is a, a, a great enabler of that, and that's why I say it enables a broader work of toolkit. Now, why are organizations looking at BYOD? And I'll, and I'll just sidebar this uh, with this next slide for a, second, for a minute. Um, uh, at, at its very basic level, 
uh, BYOD increases worker productivity. And as an IT person, I can argue or I can disagree with this point, but the fact is workers believe it makes them more productive. And so you see this bottom point, um, I am more productive than I was two years ago. Well, that's, you know, workers believe that. Uh, you can see some of the ones highlighted here. They're more productive with access to home apps. Personal technology is better. And the very, very top bullet is very salient. Only 14% of workers today are afraid of new technology. Now, think of that stark contrast from a decade ago where every time you introduced a new device or new technology into the workplace, workers were scared. So the rate of change of endpoint is much faster. Um, and, again, it, it, uh, this is one of the reasons why um, uh, agility at that compute level is so important because, as I said, the rate of, you know, as the rate of change um, accelerates, it becomes more important for organizations to be able to adapt quicker. So some of the inter other interesting data points here, on average, workers tend to use four consumer tools in their everyday work, uh, in their everyday work day. Um, as I mentioned before, they believe the way they make them more productive. Uh, workers believe that the consumer devices are better than corporate technology, and as I said, they're no longer afraid of, of, uh, of the new technology. <clears throat> and that's been one of the drivers of, of VDI. And in this next slide, I'll actually uh, highlight what some of the other drivers are as well. Um, uh, the biggest driver is it reduces desktop management. And uh, again, the complexity of desktop management tends to ebb and flow uh, through a computer, but it's getting more and more complex. So you think about um, in the old mainframe days, desktop management was pretty simple. There, there really was no desktop. It was these terminals that were directly connected in. And then as we moved into more client-server computing, we were able to standardize on just PCs. So every desktop kind of looked the same, uh, same OS, same applications. Uh, today, you know, the, it's a little more diverse. Um, uh, maybe we'll have, a comp if it's uh, corporate issue devices, it's a mix of laptops and, and desktops. Uh, but in today's BYOD-driven environment, the desktop management has grown exponentially. You have to worry about not just, um, you know, uh, maybe two or three PCs. You have to worry about a multitude of devices, operating systems, wireless connectivity, uh, cellular con connectivity, um, and, uh, you know, it, many, many different types of applications. And so the, the overall complexity of desktop management has grown exponentially. And from a scalability perspective, organizations need to find a way to get a better handle on that or they're going to find themselves in a situation where, uh, where it doesn't work out. You know, it, it causes more uh, problems and help desk issues go up. And, um, you know, and the, the second driver is it reduces desktop provisioning time. So historically, desktop provisioning has not been ever easy, but what organizations would do would they be they would create a gold standard for a desktop that came preloaded with every application and every piece of content a user might need, and if that user tends to lose the device, it breaks, whatever, just drop a new image on and start over. Now, again, in this BYOD-driven era, that, of course, is, is very difficult. So desktop provisioning time, uh, for my research, um, the organizations that use VDI can see their desktop provisioning time <coughs> excuse me, dramatically decreased by as much as half or even 60 70% in some cases. Uh, it allows for more frequent OS software upgrades, I think, historically, about how you had to manage uh, software upgrades, um, had to be uh, tested on mul a multitude of different devices, different operating systems, and the software roll could take months. Now that, o that software upgrade is done centrally, and all the workers get the new features. Um, another driver you can see that's over 29% is BYOD, but really all of the above bullets are BYOD related in a way. So um, again, there's you know, a tremendous number of drivers towards uh, uh, for VDI today that I think can make uh, uh, the desktop manager's uh, life much simpler. So now that I looked at the drivers, let's just take a look at the technology itself. So um, yesterday's VDI um, was very, um, uh, I guess the, the word I would use is standardized, right? So it was a lot like server virtualization. And so in the world of server virtualization, the idea is to replicate a standard image for servers over and over again. And standardization was really the key to the success for um, uh, for server virtualization. In the world of EDI, we tried that for a while to take a hypervisor that ran on a, you know, some sort of centralized server somewhere. We had these different PC images, and we pushed them down to these PCs, and we created these standardized images. Now, users don't tend to like standardized images. They want custom desktop. They want their icons in different places. They want to be able to work the, the way they want to work. So if you look at the next slide, which is today's EDI, 
the model has changed um, um, you know, quite a bit. It's now not um, uh, these standard images running these devices. Uh, the mobile, uh, you can almost think of the virtual client as being a mobile or uh, fluid resource that can be moved around from device to device. So I have the ability to check out, uh, quote unquote, check out an OS or a workspace and then uh, be able to use it on a different device. So in theory, if I deploy this technology correctly, I can actually be running in a certain workspace. Um, I could turn off that device, walk over, reboot on another device, and I'd have I'd be back to where I was. And this ability to check out these devices and cache them actually solves the airplane problem. Airplane problem. Uh, you can mix and match. So you can see on the right hand side, I show personal apps and data on top of work OS, or you can have work apps and data on top of a personal OS. Really, however the worker wants to be able to use these things, they can. It creates a, a great deal of customability. It protects the organization uh, from, from data fraud. It protects the organization from even people being able to um, you know, um, use USB sticks and things like that, and it creates much more flexibility. And so um, this problem of if I'm on the road and I lose my device or I leave my tablet in the back of the cab, my data is still protected because it's pushed into the network. And so today's VDI uh, I know there's, uh, you know, uh, personally, before I was an analyst, and I maybe I should have given a bit more intro to myself, um, uh, I, I actually was uh, um, a thin client administrator, and I know that the technology wasn't very flexible, and uh, but today's technology is much, much better. And if you haven't looked at VDI in a while, it's, take, it's time to take another look at it, because it's, 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 uh, it can really replicate almost any type of client computing model that you want. Now, my next slide, I'll talk about specifically about some of the benefits and challenges of, um, of VDI um, um, and some of the benefits you see that IT can move away from purchasing and maintaining client devices. That's huge. Or it can just allow you to have greater longevity of the client devices that you already have. So I've seen uh, organizations stretch out the lifespan of PCs from even three years to five years to seven years. That may or may not be important to you, depending on the type of organization you are, if you lease them or bought them, things like that. Uh, workers can buy their own client devices, and I've seen a number of companies move to that model where they issue the worker some sort of stipend, and then they're able to um, offset that cost, especially on the support side. Uh, IT can leverage uh, app virtualization technology and desktop virtualization to deploy the work environments. And so from a benefits perspective, you can see here uh, centralized management and security. Um, uh, especially in this era, again, of, of BYOD and cloud, you want to be able to secure your content centrally. Um, there's been ob obviously plenty of breaches in the news, and of course you don't want to be one of those companies in the news. Uh, mal malware can't propagate as well. Because these images, these desktops are stand in their own sandbox protected environment, VDI offers much greater protection of corporate data than traditional computing. Uh, fewer IT resources to require and to manage, so uh, my research shows that about 80 to 85 percent of IT budgets today are used to maintain the status quo. Well, if you wanted, nobody joined IT and became an IT person to be able to maintain the status quo. So if you want more budget to do cool new stuff with, this is a good way to lower the overall cost of, of, uh, of, of uh, IT. And then users have greater freedom with the clients. Now, from a challenges perspective, uh, VDI protocols can run poorly over the WAN if it's not managed properly, so you need to have great visibility into how they're running. Um, the WAN typically has an order of magnitude less bandwidth than your LAN, so you do get differences uh, in experience, and that's because VDI can be fairly bandwidth intensive. I'm not saying they always run poorly over the WAN, but you need to be able to manage your WAN and have the proper network visibility if you're going to be able to manage it. Uh, multi, some kind of multimedia optimization is required. Obviously, we do a lot of more collaboration today. Even sessions like this with, you know, using something like WebEx uh, allows us to collaborate better. Uh, QoS is difficult to manage. Uh, scaling data infrastructure is difficult to manage as well. And, and lastly, I think there's a lot of blind spots that, that happen when you shift resources from traditional physical uh, devices to virtual resources. Uh, you create these different blind spots because the traditional management tools that you had weren't really ever designed to manage virtual environments. And so by moving to more um, of, a, of, a, of a virtual computing model, you need to bring in, in new management tools. 
And I'll cover those in a second, but I do want to uh, run a poll now to take a look at um, you know, some of the tools that people are already using. So I believe it's time that uh, you should see a little box pop up. Um, there it is. So the question on our poll is, what tools do you use for managing VDI today? Do you use provisioning tools only? That would be something like View Manager and Zen Director. Do you purchase uh, vendor tools like VCOPS? Uh, do you purchase third-party tools? Are you evaluating or do you not use any tools? And while we're waiting for some of the responses, uh, I'm going to ask uh, Nathaniel, who introduced me, um, you know, you work for a management company, in your experience, what have you seen? Because I've traditionally seen organizations try and live with just the provisioning tools. Yeah, I think that's definitely where most organizations start. I mean, obviously you get that uh, when you purchase BDI, you get something that at least tells you, hey, our user's logged in, you have some basic ability to troubleshoot, and you get some simple session, you know, type of information about the pools and, you know, things like that. But I think that most organizations, as they work through a pilot, come to the realization that, you know, just being able to control the desktops doesn't necessarily give them enough visibility into the infrastructure that supports them. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because visibility here is the key, right? It's not just because your resources now are pushed into the network, you really have to have a lot of visibility as to what's going on at the layer. Um, in some ways, you know, at the network, um, uh, you know, within the, the resources themselves. So, um, and, and in fact, if, if you look here um, uh, at the responses we had, 30% said provisioning tools only, only 4% said no tools, but um, um, you know, it's, uh, I think it's similar to what we were both saying, that, uh, that, that uh, either the vendor tools or the provisioning tools are the ones that are most heavily used here. So, uh, anyways, I'll move on to the next slide, and then I'll uh, get a couple more that I'll turn over to you, Nathaniel. So, VDI, as I mentioned, does require robust management tools. In fact, it re requires an entirely different approach to management. I think it's not, you know, the resources today that drive VDI are very fluid, um, um, they are uh, not static. Uh, the environment is completely different. So you need to think about things like reporting tools. Do you, and, and this includes real-time reporting tools to understand what's happening right now, what's happening, how things are trending. If you can set a proper baseline, um, you, you can then under, you can become much more predictive in your management. So if you notice the performance of EDI going down in these reports, say, every month, Maybe you don't have users calling you yet, but you can predict that an, an error will occur, a problem, problems will happen, and so you need to, the reporting tools can allow you to shift to more of these, uh, more of a much more proactive model. The performance management tools, of course, are, are, uh, are critical to understand the, how the, the, the user, what the user experience is like. Uh, network visibility here is the key. As I started off with, VDI is a network-centric compute model, so visibility of the network um, just from logical thought processes, a must if you're going to try and interpret how the user's experiences and how the applications are working. Uh, Real-time analytics, um, you know, being able to take a look at all the data that you get, do some analytics on it, and then be able to make quantify that um, into something that's meaningful. Uh, intelligence and learning, so not a learning on everything that could be a problem, but some of the performance issues or some of the issues that could cause performance problems need to be learned on. Uh, SLA performance monitoring. And to ensure that you're meeting the SLAs that you've guaranteed the company. Uh, capacity planning tools uh, are critical as well uh, to make sure that uh, you always have the right amount of capacity to uh, allow workers to be able to use VDI. Uh, playback capabilities. So if, when a problem does occur, do you have the ability to go back and look and see what happened to, to be able to troubleshoot uh, uh, better. Uh, a tool that spans both the physical and virtual boundaries. So VDI, while it's called virtual is a mix of virtual and physical entities. There is no such thing as an all virtual or all software driven world. There still are hardware elements to be ma managed as well, but you need something that can look across these boundaries. And that's really a failure of some of the, uh, the vendor supply tools where they will look at that virtual workload, but they don't have a lot of visibility into the physical world. Similarly with a lot of the legacy tools, they have a good visibility into the physical world, but not the virtual world. You need a tool that can span both. And lastly, it operates across the VDI life cycle. So that's all the way from the planning phase to the operational and optimization phase. And I think those are really the keys to look at when you're thinking about um, management tools for, for VDI. So 
So I've just got one last slide, and that's my uh, final thoughts, and, um, uh, and then I'll, I'll turn over to Fanuel. Um, IT today does sit on the precipice of another major computing revolution, this time the shift to virtual computing. VDI is going to enable workers to, uh, more workers to access more information over more devices than ever before. Um, uh, I think, uh, you know, as the, the evolution of devices continues to happen and more and more devices get brought into the workplace, it becomes very important to have a VDI strategy in place. Uh, provisioning tools, though, aren't enough. VDI requires good, solid lifecycle management uh, all the way from the deployment phase, well, the planning phase, all the way through the optimization phase to make sure that your environment is always working optimally to support VDI. Um, it, you need to ensure that a high-quality, consistent user experience to virtual desktops is what users have. In fact, you can almost think of user experience as being the key SLA now for uh, IT leaders. And uh, I think VDI management is the thing that can, you know, bridge that gap between the physical and virtual computing worlds. And so, um, you know, uh, I don't want to uh, – I, I want to leave you with the impression that VDI can – you know, there's a tremendous amount of power for the organization and flexibility – but the, the important thing is to have the management tools in place um, as you deploy this to make sure that users get a good quality experience. Um, otherwise, you'll eat into some of that ROI you were looking for from deploying the technology in the first place. So th that's the end of my presentation. Um, I'll turn it over to Nathaniel now, and he'll go through, um, uh, you know, exactly what Zangadi is doing to solve this problem. Excellent. Well, thank you. I appreciate the perspective, James. That's tremendously, tremendously helpful to have the industry framed in such a, a complete way. The Zangati solution for virtual desktops is built around an appliance that monitors all of the critical components for virtual desktop infrastructure. And so that will certainly include things like the pools and the users, the desktops they connect to. It will include even the clients, the network paths that either the hard or the soft clients use to, uh, to connect back to the desktops. Of course, we know that the desktops actually run on hosts. Um, the hosts, of course, connect to data stores uh, via a variety of paths. There may be application virtualization servers and, indeed, other supporting servers like connection brokers, provisioning servers, load balancers, DNS, Active Directory, all of these kind of things that collectively together make up the virtual desktop infrastructure. And if you think about the infrastructure, it's actually important that all of these components are healthy at a given time. What the Zangati dashboard is doing is actually tracking each one of the items in each one of these categories in real time and basically computing the overall health and evaluating the overall health of the entire environment. Now, if I take this out of the summary mode and look at the, at the full version of the dashboard, if you will, you'll notice that it's a very busy place, and probably the first thing you notice is that everything is moving. Uh, in real time. And that's one of the distinctive factors that makes Zangati what it is. We use a memory-driven architecture at Zangati that enables us to process metrics in real time and feed the screen directly. The long history of management products is really that they take information into a central database, they average it over 5, 10, or 15-minute intervals, and basically send information to an administrator via a variety of reports or static screens. And where Zangati is different is that we're able to show the fluctuation that actually happens inside a network on a second-by-second -second basis, whether that's with hypervisor metrics, whether that's with the network information. And this enables us to respond appropriately to the dynamic environment that VDI uh, is and that VDI actually creates. If you look at the bottom, we also have a slider bar that works very much like the DVR on your system uh, at home for maybe watching the game. And you can see that we can smoothly move through time in a continuous fashion, and we can observe the minute changes in health um, you know, as they flash by and what the changes in the infrastructure were that created those things. You'll also notice that there's a red record button here to the side, and indeed any of these Zangati screens can be recorded in order to capture the state of the infrastructure at a particular point in time. Of course, they can also be scheduled for later, perhaps if there's a known problem on Tuesday afternoons at 2 o'clock, well, wouldn't it make sense to put some security cameras, if you will, on key entrances and exits, on key um, servers or key desktops within the organization to see exactly what's going on. 
and that preserves all of this one-second data and allows you to see exactly what's going on across dozens of metrics. To give you an example of that, our dashboard also will create these recordings automatically at the point that something goes bump, if you will, um, or something is out of profile, whether that's out of kind of its normal behavior or secondarily whether it's outside of best practices that would be established by either VMware or Citrix for their respective products. So if I click on the alert icon, it will tell me that I have a particular desktop that appears to be experiencing some data store read latency at this time. And clicking the playback button will go ahead and load up a recording for this particular desktop, and it will show us what was happening at the exact time that this triggered. It looks like in addition to the data store latency, there was some high CPU usage and apparently some pretty unusual bandwidth activity uh, for PC over IP that you can see here about. 8 meg, some traffic coming from Google Web. I mean, my suspicion would be that we are seeing something where um, you know, there's, a, there's a YouTube video kind of happening here. And you can see that the data store latency is, you know, is pretty low, but there was a spike to 7 milliseconds. Now, 7 milliseconds is not that great, but it's apparently unusual for the performance of this particular environment. And there you can see it actually jumped to 52 seconds briefly. Um, and so the recordings actually show contextually exactly what happens for a particular desktop at a particular time. And the interesting thing is, is that even though the data store latency did not get horribly bad, it was unusual. And for those of you that are, for example, running solid state drive systems to really improve uh, desktop latency performance for loading up applications and things like that, you'll be glad to know that we can catch those minor fluctuations. Because if you're paying for a lot of solid state caching, you wouldn't want to see your data store latency where it's normally, say, at 5 or 7 or 3 milliseconds, if that all of a sudden jumps to 15 or to 20, that would be pretty unusual, and you're not getting the performance that you paid for. And the Zangati solution is able to catch those things even when they occur very, very quickly inside the environment. Now, as powerful as it is to be able to capture the exact state of a desktop or a host or a data store with all of its interactions at a moment in time and see in context exactly what's happening, the Zangati solution also has a number of automated capabilities that seek to really simplify that model. I think you can understand that if you're dealing with an environment that has hundreds or thousands of desktops, clicking on half a dozen recordings and working through them manually to understand exactly what goes on is certainly better than a bunch of log reading, but it also perhaps is not as flexible as an automated correlation system that can go ahead and keep track of shifts and changes across the infrastructure and how they impact the whole. And we have a tool that we call the Storm Tracker. This is a user interface that's designed to be able to look visually across large slots of the infrastructure. And in this example, I have, uh, I have two vCenters in the environment, um, one of them that has, uh, let's see here, three, six hosts, and this other one that has four hosts. And you can see that for uh, in places where contention exists, that the, that the, the clouds, if you will, uh, begin to darken. And if I go ahead and zoom into this vCenter, you can see that on my host down here, uh, it looks like there's some memory contention, and up here there's also some memory contention. If I were to go ahead and uh, take a look at the memory contention that's on this host, it looks like I've got about half a dozen items that are contending for memory of this particular host, and it might be interesting to us to go ahead and take a look at what happens. Now, behind every row in this table, there's actually one of those Zangati recordings that I showed you that has all of the complete communication, contextual storage, CPU, memory details of what's going on. But rather than do that, let's go ahead and analyze this and take a look at what's happening. And in the analysis for this particular event, there's a variety of VMs that actually alerted during the time period. But interestingly, none of them were exhibiting significantly higher consumed memory than the other virtual machines. So in this case, the memory contention is likely caused by insufficient host memory to meet the demand. Now, that's interesting. Now, one of the questions that we might ask, though, is, is this something that just happened, like, over the last five minutes? Is this something that has occurred one time? Or is this a chronic problem that is occurring over and over and over again? Is it getting worse over time? Is it related to the actual underlying capacity of the, of the host that's in question? It's a good question to ask because 
in many cases, the host actually has adequate RAM, and perhaps there, there are just individual virtual machines that are, you know, acting up or consuming more RAM than normal. Well, what we do is we actually graph something that we call storm intensity over the last 30 days. In other words, how often was it that these particular virtual machines uh, were contending for memory on this host? And you can see that it actually has occurred kind of sporadically. Um, over the last 30 days, it has not been consistent. Um, but if we were to look at the actual capacity for this particular host, you can see its memory utilization over the last 30 days is indeed very, very high. And so it leads us to the conclusion that we really do need to add more physical memory to this host, or we need to migrate one or more of these virtual machines onto a different host. So the Zangati system is able to do a lot of automatic correlation across many, many systems to reduce things down to very simple analyses that are immediately actionable and enable you to see whether they're one-time patterns, whether it's a chronic problem, and to be able to make an intelligent decision for capital allocation on where you need to place resources in order to resolve certain types of contention or certain types of user-affecting behavior inside the environment. So these recordings that are at the foundation of Zangati can be very, very useful for kind of stating what's happening at a particular point in time. We have automated analysis that can simplify those recordings even by considering what happens when there are multiple things that are affected inside the environment through our storm tracker. But these recordings can also be very useful to actually allow the users to leave an object of record at the time when they're actually experiencing a difficulty. The next thing that I'll show you with regard to our recording technology is something that we call the visual trouble ticket. And the visual trouble ticket is a very simple user interface. This is actually a web form that is served by the Zangati appliance and is completely customizable. The logos can be replaced, the text can be replaced, all of those kind of things. And the idea is, is that a user would come in and fill in their username, put in an email address, and then they would put in their helpful comment. The internet is slow, Google is broken, my mail is unusable. Whatever their user experience is, which is normally described in non-technical terms. The important thing is that when they click the Create Visual Trouble Ticket button, what happens on the Zangati appliance is that we start a 15-minute recording with a one-minute pre-roll buffer that covers all of the elements of that desktop. That would include all of the hypervisor metrics, things for memory, CPU, disk. It would also include the actual processes running on that VDI desktop, as well as information about the VDI protocol. And the power of that, of course, is that when the trouble ticket is filed, uh, that means that there's a record of exactly what was happening on that desktop and with the associated infrastructure at that moment in time. Very often in VDI, the problem is that when a user complains, the infrastructure is dynamic, the load on the infrastructure is dynamic, and by the time someone looks at it, the problem has resolved. And then it becomes a needle in a haystack. The problem isn't there, so how much effort do you spend, do you need to spend, and it kind of ends up depending on the political sensitivity of the particular user in question very often. What happens if you do have to go back, it becomes a needle in a haystack. Well, with Zangati, when we're looking at um, an individual desktop, um, let's see here, maybe we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll look at this particular view desktop. If you're looking at a particular desktop at a moment in time, it of course has various things that are happening to it, um, you know, for CPU usage consumed memory. And to give you a sense for the, the level of information that we'll get, I'll go ahead and just launch uh, what we call our Windows System Viewer that uses the Windows Management Interface to actually drill into the desktop and it actually will then pull out this process level information um, that, I, that I mentioned. Because very often, 
what uh, what happens is is if we were looking, for example, at you know a desktop that's consuming four gig of RAM, we might find that to be um, you know very excessive. Uh, we might want to go ahead and grab something like its active memory and say, okay, you know, it's it's using about a gig of that, um, you know, very actively. But in order to get the context of what's really behind there, it's necessary to get some of the process information. And so we will use uh, the Windows management interface to go ahead and um, you know, get that information out of the desktop. Um, this information we will gather in a couple of different scenarios, if you will. The first is that it's available on demand um, when I go ahead and select uh, to get the system performance information, it will go ahead and log in and begin to gather that information. The second time that we'll do it is actually as a part of the visual trouble ticket uh, where we were talking just a moment ago. If there's a desktop in distress or a user that has a question and kind of raises their hand and says, pick me, in those uh, particular cases, we would want to drill in and actually get out um, the, the processes that are going. And, of course, it, it looks like I picked one that isn't as interesting. So we'll, uh, we'll let that start um, for, for a different desktop and uh, perhaps carry on with looking at some of the other capabilities of the system. So the Zangati system is capable of not only kind of looking in real time as to what's happened, but also will generate a great variety of useful reports that can be used to investigate the system over time. And so I'll just preview a couple of these for you. First, of course, you can definitely look at uh, you know, the different alerts that might have happened in a given period of time and analyze those by severity, by duration, things like that. Uh, we can certainly call out things that uh, you know, may be reaching capacity thresholds where um, it might be important to know if things are going to cross a threshold either uh, today or, you know, 55 days out, 39 days out, if nothing is done. There are, of course, as well, a wide variety of reports that enable you to investigate particular objects within the system, whether those would be hosts, um, as in this example, uh, whether those would be data stores, whether they would be desktops. Um, you can clearly see what happens with CPU, with data store activity, with latency, uh, with memory, with interactions within the system. Uh, so much so that we've also produced a variety of very useful reports that show, for, for example, different parts of the infrastructure in context with others. So if I were to grab all of my hosts, on the same uh, kind of timeline, you can see that one of my ESX hosts all of a sudden here, just in the last several hours, has uh, had a, a big spike of network activity relative to its peers. If we were to look at CPU usage again, we can clearly see the outliers of how the load on the infrastructure may be distributed across different ESX hosts in the environment. And this, of course, can be very useful to quickly spot if there are load balancing opportunities uh, within a, a group of hosts uh, to say that, you know, maybe we want to distribute the load better or, you um, know, alter the provisioning. The same thing with data stores. If the load is very uneven across data stores and there are big outliers or, uh, you know, other things, the system can easily find those things and present them. This technology also works for desktops themselves to show if there are particular desktops that actually have really unusual patterns of CPU activity or uh, perhaps data store or, uh, or memory usage. It can be very useful for going ahead and highlighting power users or finding places in the infrastructure where perhaps provisioning, you know, might, might be, uh, you know, altered to better serve a particular class or category of users. The system as well is very good at um, identifying places where capacity utilization is very high um, and where there may be a desire to, um, you know, talk about workloads or um, you know, perhaps reprovision something. The system is also very good at analyzing for spare capacity and finding places where there may be waste in the environment. Now, if you were to assume that uh, inside my environment, for example, that my cores are probably some version of the on chip at, you know, some core speed between two and a half and maybe three and a half gigahertz. 
you can see that some of these desktops here, they're probably over-provisioned by at least a core, if not closer to two cores of activity. And so by clawing back the provisioning on some of these systems, uh, it probably would decrease my CPU uh, contention within the hypervisor and lead to better performance. And so the system can clearly call uh, you know, those kind of, those kind of things out. So the Bengali dashboard is one that will provide a very rich capability to really capture the end user experience at the time that it's occurring. And whether that's through uh, summary information that shows the entire infrastructure in kind of a very graphical and simplified way in a health score, whether that's through uh, something like our storm tracker, that enables you to uh, to see whole swaths of the infrastructure graphically and drill down. Things like the visual trouble ticket or uh, the window system viewer that enables you to even get all the way down into uh, an individual desktop to actually see individual process level information for what's happening in context with the hypervisor information. The Zangati system is one that presents a lot of rich information in a very quick and easily accessible, uh, you know, kind of, kind of a model. So in terms of uh, considering the, uh, the, the Zangati system by way of, uh, of, a, of a summary, the Zangati system is designed around uh, looking at end-to-end -end performance management. And I think it would be uh, interesting to take a quick poll and uh, actually see uh, what values you would place on a performance management system. Uh, would it be, um, you know, perhaps things related to, to the speed of the interface or its granularity in different ways? So let's go ahead and launch the second poll. So we've got items here for um, for taking a look at uh, you know whether it's really important to have granularity in the time domain, um, being important to perhaps correlate for uh, for root cause. To and re uh, well, really, Nathaniel, all of these are important, you know. That, but um, um, I guess it, in a lot of ways, it depends on where the organizations are in their deployment, too. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed, I think that. Uh, very, uh, very often the needs of an organization shift as they move from a uh, kind of more of a proof of concept or a pilot deployment where maybe they're doing a fraction of the infrastructure and, uh, you know, then later uh, it moves into deployment and during the scale-up period uh, where they're going from that pilot up to their full kind of user count, we often see that the needs change there and then in sustained operation they change yet again. So. I think that's uh, that's a that's a that's a very uh, kind of pertinent comment, if you will. So just another couple seconds here, and the poll will wrap up. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I think that's that's that, that reflects uh, what our experience is very clearly. That, um, that there's a lot of desire to have really intelligent summarization, obviously to the degree that um, an automated and dynamic system can be managed in an automated and responsive way that summarizes things uh, directly to actionable information. Um, you know, I, I think that, that that goes hand in hand with the actual technology itself. So. Uh, the Zangati solution is really designed to provide the intelligence to operate, maintain, and grow an infrastructure. So it'll you know, look at everything as we've seen from uh, things like bandwidth, CPU, memory consumption, and really give you the information to optimize uh, the virtual machine resources, the desktop resources, and to see what's happening end to end. And in many cases, this can reduce unnecessary hardware purchases just because you can see clearly that with something like the storm tracker, it will actually show whether a particular contention event or a particular problem is actually chronic, happens all the time, or whether it's perhaps growing and will be a problem, or whether it is truly something that was just a sporadic um, thing that happened just due to fairly normal usage 
patterns in the environment and is not actually related to the health of the underlying infrastructure. It was just a transitory event that is not likely to reoccur. And so by being able to really tie real-time performance management together with longer-term um, you know, capacity trends, the Zangati solution provides some very powerful capability. We talked about the, uh, the visual trouble ticket and how it is really the only thing on the market that can capture the end user at the time they're having a problem, literally down to the process level. Uh, that can offer a wonderful uh, way to interact and to have a help desk start out with really actionable um, information. And finally, um, as we uh, kind of move into a, a brief question and answer period, I want to make sure to let you know that we have a special offer for everyone who's attended the webinar uh, today that we will be glad to use some of our professional service engineers to give you a complimentary health check of your VDI environment um, or your server environment if you'd prefer. Uh, there will be a sign-up page as you exit the webinar, and uh, we will go ahead and actually use the tool and apply some of our engineering resources to help you find what's going on. So if you know that you have uh, some sort of an issue that's hard to track down or uh, you're just interested in knowing kind of where your infrastructure stands, uh, we'll be happy to, uh, to, to help you out with that uh, with, this, uh, with this particular offer. And in the closing uh, minutes of the webinar, uh, we would certainly be happy to uh, take a couple of questions, if there are any, uh, either for myself um, or for or for Zayas. It's a pretty great opportunity to uh, to have access to him. So if anybody has uh, any questions, uh, you can go ahead and put those into the chat, and uh, and we will uh, we will get those uh, you know kind of kind of right out of the gate. So I guess I'll um, you know kind of kick off um, Zayas. So maybe um, just just to ask you, you know, in, in your experience, um, what, are, what are probably the, uh, the, the big things that people need to, to look for as they're doing a pilot deployment of, of BDI? What would be some key things that they would want to get out of that pilot? Well, I think, you know, it's a lot of what you talked about. It's really it's understanding whether the environment can support it and how to measure the user experience. I think you know, there are, for some applications like voice over IP, right, we have something called a MOS score, and there's some good tools that will tell you um, how voice over IP is performing the network. But we don't, there's no real equivalent to that uh, on the VDI side. There's, there's no, in, in fact, that would be something for a company like yours to, to try and develop, to try and, um, you know, understand that as you correlate that environment and as you deploy it, how does that change things? And I think... Um, um, you know, that's probably the most important thing to keep in mind is that, you know, this is a network-centric compute model, and you're not so much looking for faults, right, because we build our environment so redundant today that you can – I can go flick off any server or any router or any data center and things are still going to work. It's really where those chronic issues are, where those, those issues are that, you know, what's been too wrong for too long, some of those performance-oriented issues – those are really the things that you need to find before you roll this out, because those are the things that will cause the, the user frustration. Excellent. Well, we've got a, a couple of other questions coming in here. Um, Chris asks if uh, the professional services offer includes the installation of Zengadi, and it does. Um, Patrick asks if it installs into the hypervisor on the host, or does it use SNMT or an agent on each VM? That's actually a great question, and uh, I'm glad you I'm glad you asked it. Uh, we actually install as a virtual machine, just an ODS file, into the environment, and we talk to vCenter, we'll talk to the virtual switches and things like that to get information. So there is no agent um, that's on each VM. Uh, we find that agents tend to degrade the performance of VDI anywhere from 10 to 15% of the total capacity of the infrastructure. So this is actually an agent-less solution. And let's see here. Chris asks, how is Zangani licensed? Um, Zangati is licensed uh, per, per desktop or per virtual machine. Um, so it, it's fairly straightforward from that standpoint. Um, let's see here. It uh, looks like Daniel is asking uh, a question that maybe is, is more um, for, uh, for, for your side, um, uh, Zayus. He says, uh, are there still some situations where VDI doesn't make sense to replicate what a physical PC does? 
for example, someone that does a lot of USB webcam video conferencing um, and having all that um, that happening from a zero client, would that be an example where a physical PC is still recommended? Yeah, I think if you're doing telepresence or something like that, you'd still probably want to have it on a physical device. Although most applications now, even really high-performance CAD applications, tend to work fairly well in the VDI. So the use cases are fairly limited today. Most applications are going to work for most corporate workers. If you have some outline-type applications, vertically specific apps, sure, you know, you keep those on standalone. Okay. Um, very good. I think we've got, um, you know, another question that's come in from, uh, from Patrick that kind of asks how the Zangati solution may compare with um, some other things that are, that are out there in the marketplace. Um, I think the specific question is really in regard to, um, to, to vCenter operations. Um, in specific regard to that, I would say it's actually extremely complementary. Uh, we work alongside VMware all the time um, with respect to, uh, to vCenter operations. I think one of the main things that you notice about the Zangati tool, and when you look at it visually, is just its liveness. Um, it, is, it is accurate to the second and provides very granular information in the time domain, and vCenter operations excels at some very long-range reporting, um, capacity planning, um, scenario modeling kinds of things, and in many of our largest customers, the tools are used side-by-side -side on a daily basis. So um, I think that you would find that they're very complementary if you're a user of, uh, of vCenter operations, uh, you know, t today. So let's see here. Um, I think we've got time for, for probably one more question if somebody uh, wants to, to zing one over the bow really quickly. Um, and uh, while you're thinking about that, I want to take a, a brief moment just to thank James for his time and for his insight and uh, making this, this webinar. Uh, a, a success. Uh, we have we have our final question, um, Elias. Um, can customized metrics be put on the dashboard, i.e. HDX, um, or a proprietary application process? Yes. Um, you can definitely display HDX on the dashboard. You can um, pick off application protocols that are particularly important to you um, and display those on the dashboard. So there's definitely customization for those things. Um, so. I'm glad we could, could answer that for you. But as we conclude, I want to thank you for your time in joining our webinar today. Certainly take advantage of the, uh, the, the health check, um, you know, on your, on your way out. Uh, we'd be more than happy to get your data displayed in the dashboard and uh, kind of give you some free insight into your environment. We, we thank James for his time again, and if there's anything that we can do to, uh, to help you out, please just contact us at info at zangani.com. And uh, we wish you uh, great success in the rest of your day today. Thanks so much. Bye.